So after playing Diablo 4 for a couple of weeks, there's still a lot of things people don't know in Diablo 4 that can really help out your character progression and really help get extra power, damage, and bonuses to any build for all classes in Diablo 4. I'm going to go over those five mistakes and five things you may not be taking advantage of, so make sure you're doing these when you get the chance because it can greatly increase your character's power. Now the first main difference a lot of people still don't understand is primarily based around percentage aspects like on this sword where you get percentage boost depending on the aspect that you're using and additionally there's other aspects that give you flat damage numbers or flat fortify numbers for example so one thing you can notice in particular is if you looked at just as an example this aspect of the protector you can see it will give me a barrier absorbing up to basically 3000 damage so if you look at for instance my helmet this amount of barrier that I can get for this aspect is 2360 to 4720 and it can roll effectively anywhere in that range. Now the primary difference between these two kind of aspects is that the percentage aspects specifically do not change really in terms of their target percent that they roll. So for instance if this sword rolls that 3% number which ends up being a 45% number you can see on the aspect when extracted and leveled up this is going to stay the exact same the entire time. These percentages are not going to change. You can essentially extract this aspect on lower level gear and for higher level gear it'll be the same percentages. Now for gear with aspects that have these set stat modifiers on them, being that for instance in this example 319 to 638 range on these pants, that range will actually scale based off the item power on the actual gear itself and can vary and change depending on what the item power is, which is sometimes why you see aspects like this that have very different ranges on them. Now as an example, if we look to extract the aspect with the percentage, it's 3 and 45%. And obviously because it's a two-handed sword, it's double. So, so our actual amount for our aspect is going to give us half of that, which you can see reflected in these numbers. So the aspect will be completely the same. Now the same goes for the aspects with overall stat numbers. You can see it's 598 here with a 319 range. It's going to be exactly the same. But the difference is you can actually make this more powerful before you extract this from your gear and actually make it a much more powerful piece. So you can see if we go to the blacksmith and go to upgrade weapons and armor, let's say we're going to extract this to put it on a piece of gear. What we can actually do is drop it in here to upgrade it and you can see the item power is 657 and upgrading this will probably scale this actual ability pretty significantly. So you can see if we upgrade this one time, it's going to go from 598 to 622. And how that works is we take that minimum range of 319. Now you can see that minimum 319 range goes to a minimum of 332. And it increases the overall number that is going to be on this aspect on this piece of gear. So if you want, you can actually upgrade this pretty far before you actually decide to extract it. Meaning you're going to be extracting a much higher level aspect because these number stat based aspects scale based on the item power that the actual item is itself. So you can see if we upgrade this, we're going to go to 622. And then if we upgrade this two more times again to level three, it's eventually going to go to a 647 fortify. And then if we upgrade this again, it's actually going to go to a 672 fortify. So again, when you get great drops, like for instance, this barrier drop on my helmet that has 4,012 barrier damage, you can upgrade that piece of gear to the max. And if you're ever switching gear and you want to take that off of there, make sure you upgrade it all the way so you get the max stat line possible. And now if we go to extract this gear, it's going to give us an extract that 647 number versus 598. So if you can do this with a lot of your gear and aspects, especially as you get higher level and get 10 or 20% increases in the numbers this way, it's going to make you 10 or 20% more powerful. And this is the cheapest and most effective way for these kind of aspects with these stat number rolls to greatly increase them if you're trying to pull them off of gear. Now, another really expensive mistake people are still making is paying way more than they should be to upgrade armor and to upgrade jewelry because there's a certain way you should do it. So that way you actually save your resources and a lot of your gold. Now, if we say want to go put an aspect on this ring itself, what we can do is go in here and it's going to cost us 17,000 to imprint this actual aspect onto this ring. Now, the big point here is when you get a rare item that you want to imprint something on, you want to make sure you upgrade that item and enchant that item so that way that you get the actual rolls on the piece of gear that you want before you go and actually imprint the gear to legendary. Essentially, this is because when you imprint the gear and turn it into a legendary such as this, the value of the piece goes up. And because the value of the piece goes up, it ends up making the enchantment and the upgrading way more expensive in terms of resources and in terms of gold. So you can see to upgrade that piece, it was 17,000 and it's 53,000 to enchant to reroll one of these affixes. Now you can see if we just pick any aspect to turn this into a legendary ring, we're going to imprint that aspect on the ring. And then once we go in here to actually enchant this item, 
what we can then do is pull it in here and you can see it now goes up to 115,000 gold just to enchant one piece and it requires extra materials. So while this is a minimal change, this is something you definitely want to make sure you're doing if you find a good piece is to enchant the items and get the stats on them you want and upgrade the item first. And then once you've got it upgraded and all the stats lined up how you want, then you're going to go in and add your aspect to it. Let's say you have to enchant this ring 10 times to change one of these stats to be the perfect set so that way it's a perfect roll for all of these characteristics. If you compare doing 10 times on the previous price versus 10 times on this price, you're going to end up wasting millions of gold literally and that doesn't include again upgrading now the third mistake i see people making is not actively checking the vendors and this is big for a number of reasons so if you can see my items here you can see this actual amulet that i got i got from an actual merchant and the rolls on it are fairly good and were way better than my previous amulet because i get two ranks to no mercy passive two in its slashing damage damage reduction from close enemies cooldown reduction and i was able to put my own aspect on it that really helped my build and the point being is amulets are really hard to find, at least so far for me in Diablo 4. I haven't really found many great amulets at all. And one day I went in here to check the merchant and check the jewelry vendor. And I saw a very good amulet with really good rolls on it. Picked it up for whatever gold it costs and printed my aspect on it. And it greatly helped my build overall. And you can do this with weapons and everything else. So I would highly recommend that you don't skip out on this and you actually check your vendors every once in a while, especially jewelry drops from the vendors because jewelry specifically has seemed to give me very good drops by vendors all by themselves now the next tip is something obvious but it's something that shouldn't be understated and it's doing your renown early and it's not just doing your renown early it's doing specific pieces of your renown early so that way you don't have to worry about them later so as we all know season one is soon to come and there are certain changes that they're going to be making so that we retain some of your actual progress over to your seasonal characters for season one so overall for each area for the time being so until season one comes out you want to make sure obviously you have at least the three first areas in each individual location that way you get all of the skill points that's going to give you 10 additional skill points which is going to greatly help your build and then obviously the five additional potion capacity which is big especially when you start getting around mid to late game now one thing players are doing is going for the end and getting all the paragon points to max out their build and the thing with seasons in diablo 4 specifically is that each time a new season starts you're going to continue to retain your old character but in order to experience the new content for the new seasons you're going to have to create a new character and grind some of this renown back which is why i wouldn't recommend doing these paragon points right yet because we only have a couple weeks to a month before season one and if you're just trying to have fun you don't want to grind all four of these paragon points in each area just to have to redo it when season one starts now the big thing to pay attention to for renown is that when season one does start i believe the areas discovered as well as some of the waypoints and altars of lilith all three of those areas are going to carry over into season one so in order to get the first three in each area you want to make sure you have most of the areas discovered waypoints discovered and altars of lilith and by getting all of and by getting for instance all of the altars of lilith done you get a ton of points towards your renown and altars of lilith since it carries over to season one is one of the things that won't have to be redone so in general it'll save you a bunch of time and you'll get all the extra bonuses from having all the altars because when season one starts if you have all these they'll already be completed but if you've done everything else but these you not only have to redo everything else basically but you also have to do the altars of lilith at that point as well because you didn't do them previously so do altars of lilith ere it's discovered and get all your waypoints and lastly one of the biggest tips i can possibly give regarding leveling that i know some people definitely aren't using is taking advantage fully of the difficulties and what i mean by that is once you get officially to level 50 your grind in terms of xp even though you get a hundred percent xp bonus from nightmare difficulty is going to be very very slow and i'm sure some of you have already realized that by now one of the best things you can do to counteract this is starting these difficulties early. For instance, for the first capstone at level 50, once you get to about level 45, you should be good enough in levels and power to try and attempt it either by yourself or with a friend. And what that's going to allow you to do is once you complete it, you can start playing Nightmare Difficulty and start getting 100% bonus XP from levels 45 to 50 when the grind seems very, very slow to get to that point. And again, you can do the same thing with Torment Difficulty. And what I was able to do for Torment Difficulty was at level 62, I got by myself as a solo and went and ran the Fallen Temple Capstone Dungeon at level 70. Now I did have to have a friend kind of help me with that a little bit towards the end boss fight, but once I beat it, it unlocked Torment Difficulty for me and I was able to start running XP Dungeons at level 62 with the Torment Difficulty unlocked. 
and this was giving me 200% increased XP, meaning I was getting double the previous levels of XP, and it helped me run from level 62 to 70, two times faster and it increased my XP gain by a lot. So once you get the opportunity, make sure you unlock these difficulties well before the actual recommended level, but around the level close enough that you can handle the actual difficulty and the monsters themselves because it gives you so much extra XP that it's gonna cause you to get through those sticking point levels of 45 to 50 and about 60 or 65 to 70 way faster than before but those are things I still see people doing to this day. If you haven't liked the video down below, like the video, check out this Diablo video on the left or the right of my screen for more awesome Diablo 4 content. That being said, thank you guys. Peace.